Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we will discuss a fascinating concept that plays a crucial role in various fields including engineering to computer graphics. The gradient of a scalar function and its perpendicular relationship to the level surfaces. Imagine designing the aerodynamic shape of an aeroplane wing or creating a realistic 3D model in computer graphics. Understanding why the gradient is always perpendicular to the surface can help solve these complex problems. We will break down this concept step by step starting with the basics of scalar function and gradients and then we will discuss a mathematical proof. By the end, you will have a clear understanding of this important principle and how it applies to real world scenarios. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so as we know, gradient of a scalar function is always perpendicular to the level surface. Okay. So before going to the mathematical proof, let us first discuss what is this gradient and the level surface. Okay, gradient as we know, this is an operator. Okay, mathematically in Cartesian coordinate, it is given by i cap del y del x plus j cap del y del y plus k cap del y del z. This is not a vector, but this is an operator and it obeys the laws of vector. Okay, and whenever you take gradient of a scalar function, this will be a vector quantity. So remember, gradient of a scalar function always will give you a vector quantity. Now next, level surface. So what is a level surface? And whenever you define a scalar function like phi, let phi is a function of x, y, z. Then if in that scalar field, every point the value of phi is constant. At any point, phi will be constant, let it be C. So, that type of surface will be called as level surface. Okay, so as we are saying, gradient of a scalar function gives us a vector quantity. So, as it is a vector, it will be having a direction. So, in this vector, gradient of a scalar function points in a direction perpendicular to the surface or the level surface phi. Okay, so what we will do, we will define a, a line on the surface or a tangent on the surface, then we will see that this vector is perpendicular to that tangent of the surface. Okay, so gradient of a scalar function mathematically can be expressed as i cap del phi by del x plus j cap del phi by del y plus k cap del phi by del z and let us define this level surface as phi x y z equals to c okay so we are having a surface for which phi value is constant at every point okay so now let us define a point p on this surface okay with a position vector r equals to x i k plus y j k plus z k k and there is another point q okay so let us define a vector dr between this pq and dr will be dx i k plus dy j k plus dj k and even say this dr vector will be a tangent vector to this given surface phi okay now using the partial derivative concept we can write as we know if phi is a variable of x only we can write d phi h del phi by del x into dx now h in this case phi is a variable of x y and z okay so we can write d phi h del phi by del x dx plus del phi by del y dy plus del phi by del z dz now you can see we can express this expression is a dot product of gradient of this scalar function and this dr vector. You can see i k f del phi by del x plus j k f del phi by del y plus k k f del phi by del z dot dx i k f plus dy j k f plus dz k k f. So, this is the expression of gradient of phi dot dr. Okay. Now, 
is the given surface is a level surface that is phi equals to c so every point phi value is constant okay so the change of phi d phi will be zero between p and q so from here we can write the dot product of gradient of phi and dr vector is zero and from the basic concept of vector dot product we know the dot, dot product of two vector it's zero only when they are perpendicular to each other okay so from here we can write grad phi is always perpendicular to this dr vector and dr vector is nothing but the transient vector to the surface okay so here we can directly write the grad phi is always normal to the level surface in summary gradient of a scalar function is a vector quantity and if you see its physical significance each gra gradient of a scalar function is a vector quantity so its magnitude will give you the maximum rate of change of the scalar function phi in the direction of which is the direction for which the rate of change is maximum okay so there are various important problem related to this gradient concept we will discuss in a separate video and in the next video we will discuss how we can calculate the angle between two surfaces using the gradient concept you have any questions or need further clarification feel free to leave a comment below if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up share it with others and subscribe to the channel for more in depth content i would love to hear your suggestions for future topics as well thank you so much for watching and for your continued support remember mastering the fundamentals can lead to amazing innovations keep exploring and stay curious see you in the next video thank you